Let's walk through our photo video setup for ceremony. Take it away, Alex. I don't know what I'm doing here. Today, we are gonna talk through our setup for photo video, and every photo and video team works differently, especially if you're not from the same company. So this is just our way of doing things, and we always like to encourage communication throughout the wedding day, especially if you're working with a vendor that you don't know. So this is how we set up. Um, in general, like you said, communication can go a long way to avoid any kind of issues with getting each other's way. Let's start with our video setup because in general, we have four, sometimes five cameras rolling and several of them are on tripod. So once they're set up, they're not really gonna move. So it's really important as a photo video team, whether you're working from the same company or not, for everybody to know where those tripod cameras are going to be and what they're gonna be pointed at. So you, don't, so you don't get in the way. That way you can avoid getting each other's way if at all possible. Yep. So let's dive into this. Um, we'll start with a general ceremony, which usually has some sort of stage. Traditional setup. Traditional setup. Seats here. Seats here. Don't judge Alex's drawing skills. <laughs> I'm not an artist. <laughs> he is an artist. <laughs> I, I can't draw. And then our couple would be up here. So the first thing that I typically do in general is I will want to make sure that I have a tripod angle somewhere over here and a tripod angle somewhere over here. So I draw these big spaces as far as where I want to set up because there's a lot of variables that go into whether I put it here or whether I put it back here. And one of those things would be the bridal party size. So if it's a small bridal party, I will generally put the cameras at the front corners of the seats because I'll be able to get both people and the couple at a good medium shot. Um, if the bridal party is too big and they start to wrap around this way, then I'll pull the cameras back so that I know that they're not gonna be in the shot that I need. And you'll need to lift them up too for when people stand up. Right. The primary angle is with me and I usually stick to a center shot. At the beginning, I will stand here and Veronica will stand right next to me. And we pretty much live shoulder to shoulder at that point. Yep. And we're both shooting this way to make sure we're not getting each other's way during the entire processional. Once bridal party is coming down, we anticipate the bride entering. So once that starts, Alex will rotate to get the groom's reaction, and I will rotate with him. And then depending on the layout of the room, Alex's second videographer will either be up here to get an additional reaction shot, or he will be all the way back here to get a shot from behind. When we're working as a team, it's my job specifically to make sure that I communicate to Alex when to make that rotation back to get the main shot of the bride walking down. So typically this looks like, okay, now, and turn. And so we both turn at the exact same time to get the to get the bride walking down the aisle. Right. And sometimes you, if you listen to the actual raw audio on the camera, you can usually pick up on the, all right, now, now. Yeah. <laughs> or for example, if there's a situation where the groom, for example, is getting super emotional and I don't have my second here, I will let Veronica know hey, I'm gonna stick here as long as possible. So she'll wait until the very last second that I need to turn. I know he'll need to turn. And then she'll let me know and I'll turn. That way I can get as much of the groom crying or whatever as I can. So I will typically have my second photographer in the back of the ceremony to get the back shot of the dress and them walking down the aisle. Um, as far as the back shot goes, I, for video purposes, I don't always get that shot because the room doesn't always call for that kind of shot. Most Catholic masses that we do are in very grand cathedrals, so it makes sense to do that that way. But if it's in a smaller venue that that shot's not really gonna be impactful, I will keep my second shooter in this general area. And that way he can watch this camera to make sure it stays on the reaction shot primarily he can get the reaction shot, and that way I can get the entire shot 
down the aisle from beginning to end without having to turn. And I know that I've got two shots of that reaction angle. So now we're ready for the handoff. Most of the time, with the two angles on the corners being able to get in the center, and then our second shooter generally being over here, we will either loop around to get the angle from this side, or if that doesn't work, we will push this way to get from the side. And then once the handoff happens, then we'll just shimmy over and move over to the center aisle. Okay, so once we're in the ceremony and we have everyone up at the altar, Alex and I will typically hang out right here in the middle of the aisle to get that main angle. As he mentioned, he has the main angle for video and I have multiple lenses on me getting close shots and wide shots at the same time. Sometimes during Catholic masses, Alex will sneak into a pew and take a seat. And that's really helpful because I can get a really wide shot. So if he's not able to take a seat, we will have our second videographer double check that this camera and this camera is good to go. It's good angles, it's set, it's rolling. And then at that point, we both will take a step back to the end of the aisle. So Alex can step out and I can get my big wide shot. Once I've done that, we, we go back to the center and stay there for the entire length of the ceremony. What I have my second videographer do is what I said before, either start in the back or start in the front to get the processional and the reaction. But as soon as that's done, I will have him check this camera, make sure the angle's good, and then he'll walk around, get some creative angle shots while he's walking around, and then he'll check this camera to make sure the angle's good. At that point, I let him roam and just kind of get the creative angles or any extra shots that are important in that moment. And since we also offer Super 8, if the couple has that on their day, aside from the ceremony, I will be using a Super 8 camera for the most part. During the ceremony, since I am in the center aisle with the main shot, Jaron will then take over the Super 8 to get a handful of the shots that we would need. Primarily, he'll join us here for the first kiss and the recessional. So it'll be a group of us together filming and then walking backwards with the couple, carefully. Carefully walking backwards. <laughs> And then in general, for me and my second photographer, I will typically have, thank you. I will typically have them in the back getting different angles and then hanging out on these sides to get different angles of the couple up front, as well as getting reaction shots of the congregation. That's traditionally what we do on almost every ceremony. There are a couple different types of things that we do. And being in St. Louis, there is a very large Catholic population, which we've mentioned several times. So for Catholic masses, there is actually a podium about right here, typically. It's usually on this side. Scripture readings and the homily and everything are given from this podium. I always wanna make sure I get that. In those situations, I will have my second videographer once the cameras are set and we're good to go. This camera will be on a tight, to the podium for all of those types of things. And then he will also adjust it to get the main part of the ceremony when it's necessary. That pretty much wraps up our ceremony setup. As Alex previously mentioned, after first kiss, we are hanging out here. We capture that first kiss and then we simultaneously can very carefully walk backwards as the couple is walking forwards. And then at some point around this area, we'll typically slide to the side and let them pass us. And that's another, that's another example of if you watch the raw footage and hear audio, you can sometimes hear us carefully walking backwards and then we'll say left or right, left or right. And then one of us just makes a decision so that we both go the, the same, same direction. way. Sometimes if that hasn't happened, one of us will go this way and then one of us will go this way. So then we're both shooting toward each other. And that's not, you don't really want that. Typically it's not an issue because by the time they get to this point, we would cut anyway yeah. for video. So that's just kind of here nor there, but it's all about communication. That is our setup for photo and video for a ceremony. There are so many other layouts and things that sometimes have to change. And again, it all comes down to communication and chatting with the other vendors on your team for that day. But in general, these are the rules that we stick to. And I think in, 
I think it's always good to go in with a general game plan for what would equate to probably a majority of the ceremonies and then adjusting from there for each different specific for whatever that ceremony is going to have like Indian weddings or Catholic masses like I mentioned or non-tradition where they're maybe facing each other in the congregation and everybody's down the middle. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any other questions or comments, make sure you post them down below and we'll see you on the next one.